This is Josh Holyfield, and welcome to another episode of Make America Swole Again. A no bullshit, no sugarcoating, snowflake free podcast where I teach you how to step out of your comfort zone, stop dreaming, and start smashing your goals in fitness and in life. Test, mic check, one, two, one, two, three. What's up, guys? Josh Holyfield here, and welcome back to Make America Swole Again, episode number 36. You are not fucking special. That's right. We're here to talk about your excuses. And I'm here to be the one to inform you that they're not unique. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But first, I have a couple of announcements that I'd like to make. And as you guys know, it's uh, 9 o'clock here. I'm a couple minutes late. Apologies for that. Um, But real quick while I... Get started here. Let's welcome some folks in here watching me, ready to go. And let me know if you can hear me okay. I'm going to take off my headphones. Um, I've got a new setup, and I'll show you guys here in a second. I spent some time on my office today. I'm pretty excited. Uh, Let me see. I'll pull it up in the Facebook group. So, duct tape in the trunk, Timmy. Get your ass back to work. Let's fucking go. That's right, Justin. You obviously just watched that episode from a couple weeks ago, man. Hopefully that uh, made your day, man. Goddamn, real fucking talk. Oh, shit. That was the wrong fucking post. (laughs) Whoops. Here we go. Justin, what's up, man? Eric, good to see you. Uh, What else? Who else we got in here? We've got Rob Shannon, Fernando Lopez. Good to see you. Derek, Fom, G. Swole, Dave Sprode. What's up, man? Bill Frazier, hope you're doing well as well. Dominic Favallo, what's up, brother? Glad to see you're here. I hope you enjoyed your anniversary last week, man. Uh, Really proud and happy that you're able to make it that far with the same woman. Thank you for the advice. Uh, Tommy, Tommy Lilly, what's up, brother? Uh, Rob Shannon, I think I said you, or I said you earlier. Uh, Let's see. Um, We've got James Martin. What's up, dude? Be sure to beat it before you sleep, homies. That's right. (laughs) That's funny, dude. Hey, so uh, Justin, or excuse me, James Martin is one of my clients, and he, one-on-one clients, and he's like, hey, man, uh, I'm like, what's been going on with your sleep? You know, we're talking about going over kind of a few things with him. He's like, man, I've been having trouble sleeping. I'm like, are you busting? Because if you're not fucking busting, we need to get you rub one out before you go to bed. And I can tell you right now, it's going to fucking biologically, uh, from a health and, and wellness and fitness standpoint, beating, getting a nut off before you go to bed is absolutely going to help you sleep better. I can attest to that. That's something that I actually need in order to get to sleep. And I struggle to sleep if I don't. Um... Luckily, I'm not single, like uh, many of you poor souls, but if you're not, that's why they call you handsome, right? So I'll, re- I'll, so I'll tell you that joke real quick. So I figured out why everybody's calling me handsome. It's not because I'm good looking, and I know you guys are surprised because you're looking at me over there and you're probably wondering, man, that guy, that's one handsome son of a bitch. He's fucking jacked, juicy, tatted, and his fucking beard is on fleek. But I'll tell you right now, it has nothing to do with that, okay? So, a threesome is when you have intercourse with three people. A twosome is when it's you and one other, right? A handsome, yes, Dave Spro, that's exactly why everyone is calling you handsome. It has nothing to do with how beautiful that that mug of yours is, okay? Rob Schweer, what's up, man? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Brent Johnson, good to see you, brother. Uh, James, welcome, coach. Good to see you here tonight. Uh, for once, I'm glad that uh, your daughter missed cheer tonight or didn't have cheer. <laughs> All right. Uh, front squats are a killer. I love them. Fuck yeah, dude. Really great for the quads. Um, insert, David Sprode is coming in hot. He's got it. That's a hard flex right there. 
I'm in search of 120 pound dumbbells because I'm ready to take those motherfuckers for a ride on the goddamn incline. Who's got some? Send them to me. Give them to me at a good price and I will pay whatever it takes. Get some fucking 120 pound goddamn dumbbells. Send them over. Let's go. Come on. Somebody get this fucking man some 120s so he can get jacked and juicy. I know somebody here has access to them. I want you guys as a community to reach out and we need to work together 10,000 members strong and get this man some fucking 120s. Let's go. Randy McFarland, what's up, brother? <laughs> uh, Justin, working on the road. That shit sucks. That's right. You got to fucking beat it to sleep, dude. I'm telling you. And, and, let, and let your wife... If you're working on the road, you're out of town, let your wife, let your girlfriend, let your boyfriend, let your brother, whoever it is that you're fooling around with know that you're doing it for self-improvement. It has nothing to do with, you know, needing that, you know, whatever. It's so that you can keep your numbers up. It's a numbers game. We got to keep our stamina up. We got to keep our performance up. And if you're not consistently busting, you got to fucking rub them. Okay. I can tell you right now, back back in my day, I used to fucking bust it three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day. Sometimes, if I had to, basically, anytime I'd make a trip into the bathroom, fuck it, take it as a shot and fucking squeeze one out. Sometimes it used to be a race for how fucking fast I could do it. Who knows? You know, you, you might you have a competition with yourself. He said, "My man had a whole rib of ignite tonight, dude. I'm in a good mood, and here's why. All right, so real quick, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna kind of grab my camera and I'm gonna show you." Actually, you know what? Let me fucking send a picture here. Um, so what you guys can see here from this perspective, and I know, real quick, I want to show you my outfit. This is my houseware. Okay. Boom. All right. But what we did today is we took the time, and I busted out, and I, I had a couch from, that, from sitting in the garage from earlier, so we went ahead and moved it. I've got the TV over here in the office. That photo right there, that's my uh, AIT graduation certificate, but we're going to replace that with the Josh Holyfield emblem that uh, Rick White made for me, okay? And don't mind the car thing, that's for Joshua, all right? But the, the camera is too short, the cord for the camera is too short, so I'm going to pull up a photo here in a second. I'll show you what my new setup looks like. It's fucking gangster, okay? Wrong chair. Let's get that thing out of here. Okay. Joshua, you want to come say hi? Come here. Come over here and say hi to everybody. No? All right. Whatever. <clears throat> Killer threads. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I like to be comfy. I like to sport America. Which reminds me, man, I'm a little bit disappointed, dude. I sent out an email to you guys a couple weeks ago or about, I think, last week. And I uploaded the new American flag design embroidered on the hats with the snapbacks as well as the flex fit caps. And nobody got one, dude. I'm like, what the fuck? This is a badass design, dude. I made it myself. Okay, you can see that. And that's embroidered on there. This is an older one, so it's a little bit worn out. It's been through the washing machine a few times. But, dude... Just so you guys know, if you go onto the website, hit the menu, go down to the accessory section, you're going to see right there, okay, there's a, there's a new hat. I've got a, a, a bunch of them. I'm going to be coming up with more merch, more stuff. I understand Black Friday, Christmas, all that stuff is coming. We've got the t-shirt, uh, uh, Christmas t-shirt coming. I'm going to post that up next week, probably November 1st, along with the garage uh, gym workout. So we're going to get you guys dialed in so you're ready to do all the Black Friday shopping and Christmas shopping that you need. So make sure you fucking let the wife know. Okay, tell her what you want. Some Josh Holyfield merch for Christmas. Get yourself a nice hoodie. Get yourself some new shirts. Get yourself fucking dialed in. Alexis, I miss you and I'm sorry that we didn't get to talk today. We'll definitely call to talk tomorrow and we'll have ourselves some good conversation, okay? For those of you guys who don't know, Alexis is James's daughter. Um, we talk pretty much every time James and I call, and we pr James and I at least talk once or twice a day. Okay, <laughs> bro, you don't you know you don't wear shorts unless it's podcast time, <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Your bump junk fell out of the bottom of your shorts. I don't think so, man. I mean, we're packing a fucking a peaker. Okay, it looks like a. You ever heard of uh, what's it called? Um, shit, what is it? Damn it! 
What is it? Like one of them fuck prairie dog in it. <laughs> that's what that's what it looks like a prairie dog in it. And typically, that's a reference to when you're taking a shit. But yeah, you see the front and you're like this thing is peeking out, hiding behind the jungle. Okay. <laughs> I think the hat's like 25 or 30 bucks, Randy, something like that. <laughs> um, d don't do any more squats live. <laughs> Daniel, what's up? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Flexi Lexi. That's a nice one, dude. All right, so I'm in a good mood. Here, real quick, let me send this over to my Facebook so I can pull it up for you because I'm really excited. Um, if you guys don't know, for many, many years, I've been working on, like, a fold-out plastic table. Um, so I decided to go ahead and take the time. Uh, I upgraded my monitor, so I've got a 27-inch high-definition 1440p monitor. It's basically the best you can buy out there for, what, for, for the price. I invested a little bit of money just so I can enjoy the uh, video games a little bit more as well as see better. As you guys, if you guys don't know, I'm blind as a bat. Uh, I wear contact lenses. My prescription is plus six. So for those of you guys who wear glasses and you're, you're familiar with that, you know that I'm fucking basically legally blind. I can't drive. I can't function without at least contacts or glasses on. Okay. Um, so even with my contacts in my glasses are not or my eyes are not correctable to 2020 and so it makes it very difficult a lot of times i've got a pair of readers that i wear right here typically if you guys have probably seen me wear them before but these ones are getting a little bit beat up i need to go get a new pair um so i've been trying to i've been kind of struggling with the sight lately especially during winter time when the visibility is lower it makes it much difficult for me to see okay uh, he says, I call mine a gargoyle, perched up and watching out. <laughs> hey, Pat, hell yeah, man. Get yourself a hat, man. I hope you like it. Seeing eye dog is next. <laughs> All right, so real quick, let me pull this uh, this picture up, man, and show you this is where the magic happens, okay? Um, so, hold on. Let me set it up here. I changed the monitor everything around so here is my new setup so I really I got a new desk it's this nice wood um, I'm gonna probably refinish it with some poly and stain here within the next couple weeks sitting on a couple of uh, real real nice cabinets that I've got um, and then I've got the podcast mic which you guys are hearing me now my ps4 controller but remember Nolan all right I'm talking to you brother Remember how a few months ago we were talking about the ability to stand up, right? So check this shit out, man. If I want to stand, all I got to do is stand. So now I've got my standing desk. When I get tired of standing, all I got to do is sit. And my desk goes down with me. That's pretty fucking gangster. So... Because I knew I was getting ready to either move the office upstairs or upgrade my space, I didn't set up the standing desk thing. And the reason for that is because I didn't want to take the time to unbox it, unload it, resh reshuffle everything around and deal with that. So it had been sitting in a box, I shit you not, since October, or excuse me, since June for Father's Day when Kayla bought me this thing. So, um, she, she come up to me the other day and she's like, hey, am, are you going to use that standing desk thing or am I going to, do I need to sell it? And I'm like, look, I ordered a new monitor. It's coming in the mail. Let me just wait for that to come in. So I spent today getting the new off or the office dialed in again. We're going to repaint the walls in here. Okay. We're going to get a, a dark gray color, I think, with some accent lights, get a new table, probably a new couch in the back, or at least get a cover for that thing because it's kind of beat up. Um, get the game systems dialed in for the kids and basically have this space legit so that I can stream live, whatever, maybe gaming, you know, talk podcast stuff, record video content, really comfortable, nice space for me to work from. I spend a lot of my time in here. So I figure I might as well make it, you know, a place where I enjoy being and somewhere where I'm comfortable. 
Uh, a new chair is also on the horizon. You can kind of see the uh, uh, arms on this one are kind of getting beat up. Okay, so I'm, I've decided to kind of work towards trying to invest in myself. Okay. All right. He said, all that knuckle shuffles is affecting your vision. I don't think that's true, man. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Let me get out of here and get back to chatting with you guys. All right. What's up, Terry? Uh, Rob Calkins, what's up, man? Good to see you. Nolan, I'm glad you're actually in here if I was, since I was talking to you. John DePen McCarthy, what's up from New Jersey? Hey, man, good to see you. Welcome to the, to the podcast tonight. I appreciate you hanging out, brother. All right, Alexis Flexus. I like that one better than uh, Jim's. Sorry, man. We're going to have to make Alexis a custom Alexis Flexus Josh Holyfield shirt. Let me fucking put that on my list. I'm going to send it over to you, James. Alexis Flexus. All right. Let's see. All right. I like that. I'm putting it in my notes right now. All right. John Blankman, what's up? All right. Let's see here. Okay. Somebody said hello. Hi. Good to see you. <laughs> Mike Melton, good to see you, man. Happy Swoltober. I hope the program is working well for you. James, thanks, man. Uh, this is something I've been kind of putting off, so I'm glad I got it here. And I actually kind of like having the monitor sitting up here a little bit. It allows me to put the webcam so you guys can actually see me. And I'm looking eye level with my monitors instead of kind of looking down on them, with help, which helps me with my posture, right? Um, John Blankman, what's up, man? Hey, so... Um, real quick before I get into the topic for tonight, which remember is you're not fucking special. I want to make a quick announcement. It does not look like he's in here tonight, which, um, sucks, but oh well. Um, over the last week or two, we have been doing a, uh, we have been onboarding a new coach. Okay. And so our new coach, his name is John. And John is, has been in the fitness industry training, um, weight loss, strength training, as well as martial arts for the past 20 years. He's a great addition to our team. He's a former police officer. He served seven years with the Boston PD, which is no fucking joke. Okay. Um, and... I am very, very excited to have John join the team. So if you start seeing some content from John, all right, don't be surprised when you see it, okay? He's part of the team. He's, he's now uh, one of our coaches. So we have myself, James, and John, and we're looking to actually bring on another one here within a couple days. I have an interview scheduled with him sometime early next week. Okay, so let me show you, John, just so you guys aren't aren't afraid when you see this fucking beast of a man, this monster, this handsome lad, start inundating you guys with incredible fucking in the community. Okay, so this is John. All right, you can see he he fits he fits the bill as far as the look of these fine men, except unfortunately. I think he's afraid to, to grow a beard. We're going to have to have that discussion with him. It's something that's going to probably happen within the near future, especially considering the fact that November is coming here shortly. Okay. And John is uh, going to have to comply with the rules for no shave November. So you, you can see he does karate. Okay. I can tell you right now, I can't fucking do that. So fuck it. Let's bring him aboard. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so if you have questions, you need help, you see John in the group, you want to learn a little bit more about uh, how Krav Maga, Jiu Jitsu, or other forms of martial arts can help you, uh, definitely send a message at him in the group, ask questions, engage with him. Um, really, really hard working with you. Uh, really, really excited to bring John aboard, okay? He's just finished up an iteration of training with James. And uh, we are ready to bring him aboard, so he's ready to start taking on clients as early as tomorrow. Okay, so super excited. All right, thanks for that update, uh, James, by the way. Really helpful. Um, 
okay? So, and then like I said earlier, what you guys can expect is a couple more t-shirt drops uh, coming on the website, including our holiday design. Okay, if you guys didn't see that from last week's stream, um, I'll definitely show it next week when we do the, uh, when we do the drop. Okay, um, and I'm also going to be releasing the uh, Garage Athlete 12 week, or actually I think it's going to be an 8 week program for the, for the, for the home gyms. Okay, so um, definitely stay tuned for those things which are going to be dropping next week, or excuse me, on Friday. And we will have that stuff going out to you. So make sure you check in your Facebook Messenger, all that jazz. Okay. Oh, looks like we do have John in here. Giovanni. So you see Giovanni Tiano. That's that's John. He goes by John. Okay. If you're afraid and you don't want to get kicked in the face, you can formally introduce yourself and call him Giovanni until he tells you to call him John. Okay, that's fine. Um, I know I don't want him to kick me in the face, but... Uh, fortunately for me, he's part of the brotherhood. So I know that if I have any problems with anybody up in New York city, I can make a phone call and he can go over there and karate kick the fucking dog piss out of him. Right. That's how we do business around here. All right. <laughs> Mike Melton said his program's kicking their ass. We're, we like it a lot. That's awesome, brother. Great to hear it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. So. I'm having a brew tonight. We actually have a long week at work uh, this week, teaching a bunch of classes to some Marines. So I actually woke up early this morning, went into the office, taught a class, got out, and was able to do that stuff. He said, anywhere in the country, brother, not just in New York, I got you. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Speaking of which, I have a couple of enemies that we can, we can dial in. Let's uh, talk about this offline. <laughs> All right. Um, so to this week's, this week's, uh, the title of this week's podcast is you're not fucking special. All right. And so what I sometimes do is most of the time I just live my life, man. I bet you of all people who are part of this community, James knows that's kind of how I do things. Um, I'm very analytical. I'm very, uh, very, uh, strategic about the way that I do things, but typically, it's not a it's not a long thought process that it takes me in order to make decisions, especially as it pertains to business or whatever else that's going on in my life. Right? Uh, I typically sit down, think about what I'm going to do, make a decision, and that's the plan I go with. Okay. Um, so sometimes, however, what I'll do is, is I'll kind of, especially when I'm driving or I'm kind of do, spending an excess of time by myself, idle time, I definitely like to sit and reflect on things. And what that allows me to do is kind of get clarity on everything that's going on around me. I have a very busy lifestyle. I've always got something going on. So sometimes it's nice to just kind of take a, a, a pause, you know, a pause X and take the time to reflect and think about everything that I've got going on and make sure that my puzzle pieces are coming together. Okay. And I was doing that this morning when I was thinking about kind of everything that we have going on and what's happening with the business and how it's progressing and the great things that are happening and how awesome the brotherhood is. And, you know, not just that, but we do a lot of calls. Okay. And when we're talking about a lot of calls, um, as far as our, our sales team is concerned and all of our coaches that are doing the failure forward growth program and the one-on-one -on -one training, um, just this month, all right, for the month of October, we have done, we will have done based on what my schedule is, is, uh, is 57 or 55 calls between two people now three. So James and I have knocked out and shared over fifty five or over fifty calls over the last twenty over the last thirty one days. Okay, so that's at least one a day. Most of the time we have two or three, and we get a day off. Uh, Tuesdays I don't typically take calls, so you can kind of see the numbers there. We're constantly taking calls and doing client consults and giving people advice and helping people, and then obviously getting them set up to do failure forward if that's one of, what they want to do. Okay. In addition to all these calls and hearing people's stories and their lifestyle and the things that they've got going on, I'm getting messages to the point where I've literally had to hire assistants 
to, to help respond to my messages. I have two assistants we talked about. So we've got two assistants, three coaches, and we're still stacked. Just this week, John has, he's literally starting his very first calls tomorrow. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six calls within the next seven days. So every day for the next seven days, John is going to be on the phone with somebody doing these calls. Bam, 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 bam. Okay. Um, our op tempo is very high. And with all these messages, we're getting, we're offering a lot of help and advice as far as fitness, health, lifestyle, etc., to a lot of people. Okay. Um, I personally try to reply to all the messages, but a lot of times my assistants have to take over. And then when it gets to, uh, you know, something that they're not sure of, or I haven't given them guidance for, they pass that conversation to me. Okay. Um, I stay busy. And what I've found is that it's to the point where I've conversed with so many men like you and me that we've come, I've come to a place where I kind of know exactly what the, pro, the common problems are, the common questions are, the common concerns, the common priorities. And what I can tell you is that 95 to 99 percent of the time, all of it's the same. Okay, you want to lose fat while building muscle. Your priority is feeling good. You don't want to have, worry about having a six pack or an amazing body. You just want to be confident in the person you see in the mirror. Okay, you're not sure exactly what you should be doing, what direction you should be taking, what diet you should be doing, how much you should be eating, when you should be eating, what types of food you should be eating, what lifts you should be doing, what co combination of lifts you should be doing during your workouts. You're just kind of unsure. And a lot of guys have come to come to my business from a place of trying other businesses, other, uh, you know, trainers in the industry. And what they found was that it wasn't really personal enough and they didn't feel like they could take skills with them after they were done working with me in order to continue to build and, you know, progress for the long term, right? What a lot of you guys are looking for is a lifestyle change. And that's a lot of what brings the brotherhood kind of here. Um, and with all that, as it pertains to nutrition and training, one of the biggest challenges that you guys is balancing your time, accountability, motivation, um, and prioritization of the things that you're doing, right? You've got your job, you've got your family, you've got your kids, you've got your wife, you've got all these other things going on. You're getting home at your end of your day. You're not, you don't have the energy to work out. You're not able to have the self-control or discipline to wake up early enough. And so what happens is with all these things going on, your health, your fitness, and how you, and all those things go out the window. And you're not really sure what changes and what puzzle pieces you need, need to shift in your life in order to make that something that you're able to do. Right? So what I just said, probably, and one more thing is you've probably been working on different things and trying different techniques and applying different programs and diets and this and that. You may have saw some results initially, but then what happened is, is you reached a plateau, plateau or a point where you stopped seeing such great results and you weren't sure what to change or what you need to do adjust in order to continue to see results. And so what happens is you go and you jump over to a different diet and find yourself in the same boat. Or because you're not seeing the results, you kind of come to this place where you feel like it's not worth it and then you give up and then end up gaining all that weight back. And so it was like almost an entire waste, entire waste of time. Yeah, I tried keto for a while, lost, saw amazing results, but then COVID, or I saw a plateau, or this, or that, and I gained 20 pounds back. Okay, do me a favor and comment, hell yeah, if anything that I said or everything that I said applies to you and what you're and what you're seeking and kind of the struggles that you're facing when it comes to your health and fitness. Do do me a favor and comment there. And if if I'm on point here. Do me a favor and tap that like button. And even if before working with you that was you, I think we can definitely agree that this community and this, and this, and this brotherhood has definitely helped you to progress past that point. And I think that's the goal here, right? What we're trying to accomplish. Okay, so I see a ton of you guys saying, hell yeah, right? Uh, Derek, Elijah, Elijah, you agree 100%. Hell yeah, dude. Randy, um, Let's see, we got a bunch of you guys in the Facebook group. Mark McKee, Leroy, uh, 
EMT Echo Mike Tango. Justin Bray, hell yeah. He said, fuck that. No, I don't, don't give me that shit, man. <laughs> Eric Schultz, Jay M Moten. So we're on the same page, right? Nick Alberto. <clears throat> okay. So here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, John said, hell yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> All right. James, I, I respect that. You can say, I think if we use, <laughs> or maybe it was a typo. <laughs> he said, fuck giving up. That's right, dude. All right. So the point that I'm trying to make when I'm talking about this subject, and the reason why I explained and pretty much wrote down and gave you what I call in marketing my customer avatar, okay, this is, these are the people that I'm seeking to attract, right? And because they're the people that I can have the biggest impact on, okay, um, is because those are the most common problems with most of us as men. That's the truth. Right. Um, and, and we're seeing it here. We've got a ton of people watching. We've got a ton of people that are on the same page. Um, but here's the thing. You're not fucking special. OK, that's the point of the fucking podcast. So here's the problem. Here is the problem that I face and what I spend my time doing with ninety nine point nine percent of my clients. OK, I have to teach you. How to overcome those challenges and realize that those things that you just told me, that whole laundry list of things that I just told you, those are all fucking excuses. Every single one of them. And I went easy on you guys last week. You know, I said, if you're hurt, take a break. If you're not feeling it, take a break. Nobody's going to fucking stress you. Just draw the line for when you're making an actual rest pause and something that's good for your health and you making excuses, right? Okay. Now, <clears throat> this week I'm going hard on you. <clears throat> and here's what I'm going to say. If I, as somebody who's dealt with literally thousands and thousands and thousands of men, just like you and me, and I can nail down the exact picture of what you're going through and the things that you're, that you're telling yourself and the story that you've created for why you're unable to achieve the things that you're trying to achieve as far as your health and fitness are concerned, then what does that tell you? That tells you I hear the same fucking sob story every damn week, every day, the same story, the same line, the same shit. You guys are giving me these excuses after time, after time, after time, after time. And the thing is, is a lot of guys are like, fuck that, fuck excuses, hit it hard, go to the gym. But those, a lot of times, those guys are just saying that because they feel like that's what they need to say. But the truth is, is they're sitting back when they're by themselves and they look at themselves in the mirror and they're like, fuck yeah, he's right, that's me. Okay. So there has to be a point. Okay where you as a man and as a human being come to the realization in your life that you, your excuses, your problems, your obstacles, your challenges, they're not fucking special. They're not unique. They're not any different than any of the shit that anybody else is going through. So what makes you different from the guy who has a job, has kids, works full time, is tired at the end of the day, struggles to balance his time, has sports to take care of with his kids, uh, is, is focused on making sure that he's fulfilling himself and that he feels good, that has, you know, his, his wife to make sure that he's spending time with and giving her the attention that she needs and balancing all these things, plus he's making it time, making time to focus on his health by keeping his nutrition in check and focus on his fitness by dedicating at least 60 minutes a day, a day to the gym. What makes you different? Because he has the same fucking struggles, the same challenges, the same obstacles, the same excuses that you have, but he's going and you're not. What is it? What is it? The fact is, is that your excuses and what people try to do is this is a self-gratification, this is a self-validation. This is something that we choose to do to make ourselves feel better about something that we know we should be doing, something that we know we should be committing time towards. And so what we do is we tell ourselves and we try to convince ourselves that our circumstance is extenuating. 
Well, my my situation is completely different than his. You can't. That's like apples and oranges, man. Like I've got it way higher, way harder. No, you don't. No, you don't. Okay, that's what you're telling yourself to make you feel like what you're doing and what you're failing at and the things that you're not achieving and the things that you're not pursuing and the goals that you're not reaching is okay. Okay. So the point that I'm making is it's not about like you're not fucking special. Put the time in, put the work in, be a hard ass, fucking suck it up, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. That's not what it's about. What it's about is everything else. Well, Johnny got the promotion above me because he's friends with the boss's dad. Or he's the boss's son or whatever, right? No, fuck that. Work harder. Be better. Do better. Show up early. Put in the extra 10%. Put extra 20%. Do the fucking bare... Don't do the bare minimum. Put 100% in. Well, that that guy from high school who is doing better than I am is fucking... The only reason he did that is because he this. And his dad owns a business and I had to do it. Well, fuck, dude. I can give you a fucking laundry list of dudes who grew up up in fucking... Who came out of foster homes and are more successful than you are. What's your fucking excuse? What's your excuse? Okay. There are an immense amount of examples out there that can that you can find where a person was not only worse off, but less intelligent, less skilled, and less talented in the things that you're trying to accomplish in your life, and they are better off than you and have achieved more than you. And I can tell you the one key difference about that person and you is work ethic. That's it. That right there, the bottom line, the only thing that fucking matters. I'm going to be quite 100% honest with you when it comes to being successful in this world is work ethic. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter what college you went to, if you went to college. It doesn't matter if you graduate high school. It doesn't matter how talented you are. It doesn't matter if your daddy's rich, if you came from foster care, if you're poor, you're homeless, you're broke, you're dumb. It doesn't fucking matter. Do you have the work ethic? And are you willing to take the risk? Are you willing to take the risk? Are you willing to put yourself out there outside of your comfort zone and face failure head on and be willing to fail, pick yourself up and keep going forward and failing forward over and over and over until you see success? Because every single motherfucker on the top of the mountain fell a million times to get there. There's not a single person on the planet who fucking who's successful and actually good at what they do who fucking just did one of these. No one. Not a person in the world. Okay? You have to be willing to put the time in. You have to be willing to put the work in. You have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone. You have to be willing to fail. Okay? You need to make time. You need to find balance. You need to prioritize. And you need to be willing to step outside of the comfort zone. And when you can do that, And when you're willing to face fear, and when you're willing to face doubt, and turn your back on on all the doubts and insecurities you have, and self-consciousness and uncertainties, and go anyway, is when you will truly be successful in what you do and start seeing success. It is not until then that you will ever be more than what you are today. Sure, I can be 100% honest with you. I did it for the first 30 years of my life. You can do the fucking bare minimum and ride the fucking wave and just do what you have to do to fucking get make ends meet and be relatively successful and most oftentimes better off than most. Because the people who aren't doing well with themselves, most of the time it's because of drugs, alcohol, addiction, or fucking straight up being a criminal. Or, or a combination, or all of the above. Okay, if you follow the law, go through the system, do the bare minimum, show up and fucking do what you're supposed to be doing, nine times out of ten, you're going to be comfortable. Sure, you're going to have a roadblock, you're going to have an obstacle here and there, some challenges, but 
100% of the time, the only reason that you're not successful or well off is because of your own fucking choices. Nobody else's. Amen, right? You got to be fucking hungry. That's right, Nick. Hell yeah. Uh, he said, Josh, your screen is blurry. blurry. Yeah, man, my, uh, my camera went out of focus there for a second. Pat said, you nailed it. Hell yeah. Do work, put in time. That's right, Randy. Elijah, there is no real change without discomfort. He said, that fixed it, jumping out of the screen. <laughs> Quentin said, I'm a product of foster care, boys, homes, and detention centers. I chose a different path, and look at him. He's now served in the military honorably, and he's, making, he's working towards making a, a great, incredible change with his life, and he's doing awesome. Jim Collier, keep driving. Hell yeah. We get out of life what we put into it. Uh, he said, I like your hat on the table. Uh, which one? Oh, that's my, that's, that's my Halloween hat for when I want to be a witch. You got to remember, dude, I got four daughters, man. There's no, no shortage of fucking kid stuff everywhere. All right. <laughs> he said, I feel like I'm at an old fashioned Baptist revival. That's right. This message is on point and we're here to deliver. You heard it. Did I get an amen? Go ahead and comment below. Give me a fucking amen. Hey, 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 hey. Excuse the, excuse the French, okay? Maybe we're throwing it back a little bit too far or, or a little bit too forward. I don't know. Let's let's do it. Okay, Anthony Reed. <laughs> cool, man. He said, my priorities were all jacked up, and I'm getting them sorted out, though. That's right. Good shit, man. I love to hear it. <laughs> You're nailing it, man. Thank you, Leroy. I appreciate that. Justin, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> All right, I'm getting those amens. Preach, brother. Let me hear it from the from the ste steeple. What is it from the, from the altar? What, what what? I don't know. It's been a long time since I've got gone to church, man. I'll be quite frank with you. I probably need to do that, but you know what? Here we are. <laughs> he said, "You're crazy, bro." Hey, you know I some nights I have the ability to turn it on, man. I do. I'll be quite frank with you. Some nights I'm a little bit tired, I'm a little bit exhausted, I decided to turn it on for you guys tonight, and I think it has 100% to do with my fucking outfit, I'm not even going to lie, okay, we're working on the house, I'll be frank with you, this is how it progressed, alright, so this, I got home from work, I'm wearing my nice polo with the, some slacks, I got my dress shoes on, my wife, she went down and bought me a new pair of dress shoes, which I'm, you know, incredibly thankful for, they fit like a glove, super comfy, all right, I get to get home and I realize I got my new computer monitor in the mail. And my wife, she's, she's fucking on it, dude. Remember, I told you guys about this Amazon shit, right? She's obsessed. So she literally, it's to the point now where Amazon is taking it so far beyond where it needs to be as far as tracking your package go. I'm pretty sure you can get like GPS fucking geolocation on where your package is at any given time. And she's waiting. The problem with our mailman is they don't knock. They don't let us know it's there. So she'll be like, I'm expecting a package today. Right? <laughs> and she'll go onto her phone. Tick, 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 and sure enough. Oh, it's outside. <laughs> she'll run to open the door. So it was funny as hell, man. The other day we got uh, a new bet. We ordered an airplane bed for Joshua. He loves airplanes. He's such a boy, dude. Airplanes, Incredible Hulk, Iron Man, fucking cars, you name it, dude. He's obsessed. So anyway, we got him this airplane bed because we're trying to transition him out of our bed for when uh, his brother comes here within the next couple weeks. All right. And uh, <laughs> we're waiting for the mattress. We're waiting for the, uh, for the sheet set that was supposed to be delivered. And she's like, it says it was delivered. Opens the door. Where is it? And she's like, this is bullshit. I'm calling the post office, right? And so she's all getting all fussed, frustrated. We're getting ready to leave, right? We're going going down into town to eat at Red Robin Yum. And uh, as we're walking out, because the box for the mattress is so big, they just set it up against the garage. And she goes, oh! <laughs> she's stoked, right? Super excited. <laughs> the greatest thing about her, man, is, is she gets excited about everything, man. Like, legit. And it's the funniest thing. I can literally mimic every facial gesture. She doesn't even have to say anything half the time. And I can know exactly what she's thinking. Because she's so fucking animated. What's up, dude? Come over here. You want to say hello? <laughs> say hi -ya! Say hi. 
Say hi. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Junior wanted to sneak out and say hi to you guys. I hope it's all right with you. Say hi to Josh. Joshua John Jr. What's up, buddy? <laughs> say hello. Hi, <laughs> what's All right. So anyway, um, talking about, the, talking about the, the story with the Amazon thing, right? Uh, fuck, I lost my, my, my train of thought, man. Shit, somebody remind me what I was talking about, man. I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> he said he stole my short... Oh, so the progression of my outfit. Thank you for reminding me, James. Right? <laughs> so I got my outfit on, right? My monitor comes in. I'm like, sweet. All right, I've got the time. I'm going to get this office dialed in. We're going to get this furniture moved around, right? Well, I had to call my stepdad, ask him to come over. He just lives right across the street. And uh, help me move this couch, that big black couch upstairs. And uh, so we moved that. And I'm like, fuck, I finished that. And I'm like sweating. So I took off my shirt. Well, I don't just like, I always wear a wife beater with every every shirt. No matter what I'm wearing, I just feel like I have to have that undershirt on. I'm a sweaty dude. Uh, so I like the undershirt. So I'm walking around with just a tank top. But I don't like the feeling that I get when it's stretched out. And so a lot of times I have to have a shirt over the top of the tank top. I don't just wear it around. I don't know. It's a weird thing. Um, so I put the, put the t-shirt on and then I'm moving stuff around. I've got my pants unzipped and we, my mom comes over. I'm like, shit. So I got to, I was like, I got to go change out of these pants. Cause I'm walking around with my pants unzipped. So I took the pants off, put the shorts on and I'm walking around the house with the shorts and the shirt. And my wife is just start laughing at me. She's like, your outfit, you're out of control. What are you doing? You know, she's making fun of me. Right. And I'm like, okay. So you know what? Fuck it. Like if we're, if we're doing this and we're wearing this outfit, we're going to rock it. We're going to take it to the next level. Right. So I took, took, and I put on the fucking forward face and flat bill cap just to give you, give you guys some, some America. Okay. We've already got the American shorts on. Okay. So then I went and I put the high socks on. I don't wear high socks, but here we are. And then I'm like, how can I top this thing off? What can I put on that's going to complete this outfit to make me solid? Right? And so my wife, she goes, Crocs. And I'm like, Crocs with socks. You fucking got it. I don't personally own Crocs, but she's got like seven different pairs. She's got leopard ones. She's got glitter pink ones. She's got regular pink ones. She's got white colored ones. She's got like a ton of different ones. I'm like, and I'm walking into the room. She goes, not my Crocs. <laughs> You're going to stretch them out. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So I put the slippers on. Here we are. And I love it. It's put me in a great mood. I feel good. I feel free. I know Jim Collier doesn't like the fucking skivvies. But guess what, brother? I keep the liner in them so that you're not seeing my prairie dog. Okay? And it makes me feel great about myself. It's, it's bo body positivity. Okay? I'm confident. I'm happy. I'm free. I've got versatility. I can do karate kicks like John. Okay? If you guys remember John's photo from Facebook, I can do it too. Ready? Whew. Okay, so I can do that. And if you want to keep talking shit, Jim, you may find yourself catching a fucking roundhouse. Okay? This is how we're doing it. <laughs> okay? He said, what's next, a romper? I don't know, dude. I, I really feel like, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, and not to go off, because we only got a few minutes left, go off of topic here, but... You know, I think, men, we kind of got the fucking short end of the stick. We got the short end of the stick when it comes to uh, clothing options. Right? Unless you're fucking Scottish, good luck wearing a dress. But check it out, dude. Like, so women, dresses, skirts, shorts. Anything that men wear, shorts, pants, jeans, leggings, leggings. Have you ever fucking wore leggings, dude? Oh my God. So comfortable. Having that close, nice feeling on your legs. Stretchy. You can, you get full range of motion. It's fantastic, man. 
catch a dude wearing leggings, he's going to get made fun of. I, I, I'd be lying if I d- t- didn't, if I told you guys I hadn't fucking slipped on a pair of my wife's gym shark leggings to find out what the hype was about. Just going to be honest with you guys, okay? They've got all different sorts of tops, blouses, halter tops, tank tops, spaghetti straps, the whole nine yards, all, whatever you want. Women have such a wide variety and range of different clothes that they can wear for any occasion. What do we get? Pants, shorts, t-shirt, tank top, long sleeve, hoodie. That's it. Wear a hat. Maybe, maybe not. As far as formal wear is concerned, you get suits. One different type of outfit. That's it. Maybe you'll be fucking fancy and throw on a vest. If you put on anything other than a baseball hat, somebody's going to make fun of you. Like a fedora? Good luck. You're going to get made fun of by somebody. Okay. It's even to the point where something comfortable for men and at least functional to some degree, long johns. Who wears long johns anymore unless you go hunting? Nobody. Nobody wears fucking long johns. Rompers. Women get rompers. What do we get? I don't have any type of versatile, loose-fitting, ventilated, uh, easy-to-wear onesie that I can just throw on. Nope. Sure don't. Boxer in the underwear options. Boxers or briefs. Fucking, they took it to the next level about 15, 20 years ago. Introduced boxer briefs. That's fucking cool. What do we get? Nothing. Nothing. It's dog shit. We need to change that. We need to. We need. We need to change what's acceptable for men to wear. I would love, absolutely love, to be able to wear a fucking skirt. I'd love it. I love it. Think about during a hot summer day, especially where I live in North Carolina, humid as shit. Anything you wear, you're basically getting swamp ass. You might as well not even bother trying to prevent it. Your asshole is going to feel like you're in a fucking sauna the second you walk outside. Imagine if you could have the glorious airflow when you when you lightly travel at a brisk walk on the job site and a skirt that gives you all of the freedom that you need with your with your cock and ball imagine imagine think about how amazing and fantastic and wonderful it would be to let your boys free but no they're confined wear your jeans or your fucking khakis nolan enjoy right it sucks man so you guys give me a hard time about my ranger panties i'm gonna tell you no, they're skirts, Damien. They're skirts, okay? Listen. <laughs> I I'm just I'm I'm I don't care. Alright. <laughs> hey, so my, my Call of Duty Warzone partner just texted me. His name's Jake the Snake. He said, I literally just finished setting up my gym because of your podcast right now. I need to get back to where I was two years ago. I've just been lazy. That's fucking right, Jake. I'm glad to see you in the stream. If you're still watching, do me a favor and drop a comment and let everybody know how beautiful you are. Okay. All right. (laughs) Don, what's up, man? Good to see you. You're late to the party, brother. We're actually getting ready to come out, close out of here. Yeah, so Ranger Panties, that's what they're called in the army, okay? Uh, and the reason for that is because when uh, rangers, ranger battalions, when they do PT in the morning, these are the shorts that they wear. Okay, and so Marines, they're called skivvies or silkies. Okay, um, and that's what they wear for PT. Um, and then mil- army, pretty much only the rangers wear them. The, the uh, Marines, they wear them in a green OD color, very similar to this, but kind of darker. Uh, army wears them in black. Okay. So I've got a hot pink pair, I'm sure you guys are aware, um, and I've also got the American flag pair. I'm definitely probably going to be doing uh, a re- release of uh, JH brand silkies within the near future. Um, and the only reason I'm going to do that is because I want you guys to work with me. We need to change the fucking paradigm. Let's make short shorts for men great again. Let's do it. Okay, we're already making America swole again. We've already got Trump making America great again. Okay, don't talk to me about the politics. I'm just going on the list. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to make short shorts for men great again. Okay, 
So as a community, 10,000 strong, we can all unite together. We can do this. We can combine forces across the land and overwhelm our gyms with our beautifully built quads from the Josh Holyfield Project. And every single one of us is going to be stomping through the gym like one of those T-Rexes with these massive fucking legs. And our beautiful legs emerged, hair and all, and our silkies. And we're going to unite strong, and we're going to stay strong, and we're going to change the world. One gym at a time. I believe we can do it. Anthony Reed, Jim Collier, I absolutely believe that we can get you in a pair. James, there's zero fucking doubt in my mind that you'll be the first one wearing the Josh Holyfield silkies. And we can get it on. Okay, Elijah, you too, man. We're going to get you in some silkies. <laughs> and I don't give a fuck if you're, like I said, Anthony, if you're 360, 240, if you're 200, 190, 180, 120, silkies. We'll have a pair for everybody. They're going to fit. I'll go extra small through 4XL, and we're going to flood the United States of America with silkies with the fucking JH logo on it, and it's going to be glorious. What do you say? Fucking glorious. Even, who knows, maybe within the next year or two, the community will be big enough where we're going to be able to do like a fucking get together in a big city and everybody just wears silkies. Thousands of men united. All of us. And if you, and if you show up and you don't have a silky, silkies on, you're not invited. You're not invited. Sorry. You cannot experience... The Brotherhood Meetup 2022, if you're not wearing silkies. That's how it's going to happen. All right? James, I'm in, bro. My shorts are high school softball court sh coach. Short and tight. I like my squats deep and my balls visible. Let's fucking go. Let's get it done. Josh Holyfield Fitness. Josh Holyfield for President 2024. Let's do it. Silkies. I'll do my whole campaign with it. Fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> oh he says he's got to drop a comment for moderator approval let me see here uh i think you have to like the pay okay here we go i've got you now jake you're in all right i accept you to the group jake arthur all right <laughs> jh dude you're how you're getting it now you're fucking doing it nolan josh holyfield calendar with different goal getters and silkies oh my god Bro, I think we can. I think we're onto something here, Jared George. I'm down with that. Don Larue, let's do it. Hell yeah, facts. Let's go. Million Man Silky March. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I can see it now, man. <laughs> hey, if you guys didn't know, a couple months or about a month or so ago, I got a new tattoo. All right, I forgot to show you guys. Got the quad done. It's a gorilla. In case you didn't know, I know some people it looks like Chewbacca. Hey, but you know what? And here we are. Uh, I'll give you guys a better close-up shot. The goal is I'm going to do the other leg, probably wrap it around and get the leg sleeves done. Start working on that. Um, I found an artist local. I like the guy. He's a great dude. Um, so we'll probably end up having him do a little bit more work on us, okay? Or on, on me, rather. What's up, Neil? Hope you're ready to get yourself a pair of silkies, man. Get your skinny ass going. Let's do this shit. All right. Uh, that tattoo, I think it took about three hours or so. Um, I'll be honest, man. Like, I used to be all about getting tatted. I've got my arm done. I've got most of this arm done. I've got my chest done. I've got my ribs done. I've got some on my lower stomach and a bunch of small pieces on my legs. When I was in my early 20s, man, late teens, I was all about getting tatted. And what I found is that the older I get, the more painful they are, man. Like my pain tolerance for that shit just isn't where it used to be. I remember when I got my rib cage done. I mean, we're talking about my entire rib cage. Uh, it was like a five and a half, half hour piece. It was a big, long fucking ordeal. And I sat through it. No problem. Now, dude, I don't know if I could do that. To be quite frank with you, it'd be a pretty, it would be a pretty challenging thing to do. Um, he said, I'm down one nut hanging out and all. Um, so we're probably going to do another piece on the other thigh. I'm not 100% sure what I want to do. Uh, quite possible I'm going to do Hulk's face. I may do a lion. 
Um, it really just kind of depends on uh, what I go with. Typically, when it comes to tattoos, man, I'm, I'm pretty uh, indifferent until the time it comes for me to actually get the tattoo and I make a decision and just go with it. Um, Quentin said 100% on the pain the older you get. I'm glad I'm not the only one because I don't want to feel like a little bitch because I don't want to get tattoos anymore. <laughs> he said, I wanted a dragon. You could get this dragon, bro. Hold on. I got you, bro. Here's your dragon. Yeah. Anthony Reed, if you get this tattoo, I will pay for it. All right, man. Here we go. <laughs> get Puff the Magic Dragon. That'll be solid, bro. What do you think? Hell yeah, bro. Get it done. <laughs> All right, so if one thing you guys don't know about me, uh, my father is a tattoo artist. He's been tattooing since about 1985. Um, and as a child, I grew up basically inside of a tattoo shop. Like, so you guys own a business. Um, you guys, you know, your, your parents owned a business. You grew up helping out, out, out around the business. That was me, right? Except it was in a tattoo shop. So, so that was something that was very normalized for me. Especially in the late 80s and the early 90s, tattoos weren't nearly as mainstream as they are now. Um, so there was a little bit of stigma and kind of taboo that was, was around getting tattoos done. Um, but nowadays it's a little bit different, but it's something that I've kind of had exposure to my whole life. I've got a couple pieces. I've got the star on my elbow here um, done by my father. Um, I've got my daughter's name on my wrist here done by my father. But to be honest with you, I just never really like to get work done by my dad because it's my dad. I don't know. It's kind of weird. So, but I was introduced to that by my dad and that's kind of something I've always been around. So usually I'm pretty selective about who I have work on me. Um, and I have a really good idea about like being able to actually look at a tattoo and, and, and gauge the talent of the artist based upon the line work, the color blending, you know, all that stuff. Um, and so what I can tell you is that like the skilled curve for tattooing is very steep. Okay. Most guys that you'll see in every average shops are going to kind of be on the lower end of that skill curve where they can do tattoos. It's not going to look terrible. Um, but the higher you go and the better you get, it's definitely more difficult to be, you know, world renowned or, you know, very, very talented. So when I find guys who are talented in that regard and they have a specific style that I like, I definitely, uh, look to get pieces done by them. Um, so that's my exposure and experience of the tattoo world. If you guys ever have any questions, you have an artist that you're looking at getting work done by, you want me to look at their portfolio or whatever, just let me know. I'd be happy to tell you if they're if it's worth a shot, okay? Remember, that shit's forever. Last thing you want to do. It's cheaper to get a tattoo than get one fixed. Cover-up suck. And what I'll tell you is that uh, a tattoo is actually more painful to get covered up than it is to get initially put on, Okay? So a couple more things before I jump off of here for the night. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to hang out with me. I've been I've been rowdy. I've been out of control. I've been wild. I'm definitely going to start adding more energy to the podcast so they're more entertaining for you. They're more fun. We can interact better. Uh, I definitely don't want to sit, you know, at an altar and, you know, from my fucking desk here and preach this message to you and expect you to just kind of blandly listen to me for an hour. So I definitely want to work towards kind of enhancing the energy, okay? So a couple things is if you guys haven't already, John or Giovanni Tiano is in the chat. Um, I'm going to ask him formally to go ahead and do an introductory post, introduce yourself. <gasps> If you guys see that, do me a favor. Welcome John to the team. We're really, really excited to have him. I'm super pumped to have somebody with his experience um, and his background as part of our team. He's definitely going to be a great resource for you guys as well as me and James as the other coaches. Again, we're looking to bring on maybe one more within the next month or so. It just really depends on what business looks like over the next month as far as the holidays are concerned. Okay, So you may see him come before the new year. Um, but you'll definitely, absolutely, 100% see at least one more coach come on for the New Year surge for training, okay? 
Um, so, so do me a favor and give John a warm welcome to the community. He's now one of us, and I want you to use him to the best of your ability and capture as many resources and knowledge as you can from that guy, okay? Um, it's really amazing to have people with different backgrounds and knowledge as far as health and fitness is concerned. And that's something that I really like. I really want to look to expand more as we build our staff so that we're able to add more value, more variety, and more perspective to you guys um, so that we can continue to stay relevant and current with what's going on and, you know, as far as strength and conditioning and health and nutrition is concerned, okay? So thank you for that, John. Um, lastly, I know I said it already, this week, Friday, is going to be a big merch drop. We're going to do at least two or three designs, maybe four. I'm going to have a bunch of different stuff loaded out for you, including that Christmas shirt, Christmas sweater. Okay, so you guys can put, so you guys can rock that for your holiday parties. All right, um, and we're also going to be releasing the Garage Athlete uh, eight-week program that's going to be available for you guys. Um, so those of you guys who have at home, the minimum required equipment for this program is going to be dumbbells barbell bench press squat rack okay as long as you have that you can do it what i'm very likely going to do is in the pdf version of the program i'll include different variations that you can use to include things like resistance bands um, and some body weight stuff to accommodate and compensate for equipment that you may or may not have a great example is like dave sprode you know he's looking for 120 pound fucking dumbbells to take for a ride on the incline He's super strong with his chest, so in that situation, uh, we have to work to pre-exhaust those muscles ahead of time to accommodate for the lack of weight that they have with the resistance equipment they have, right? So what I'll do is, is I'll make sure I include that information there so that we can make the program as challenging as possible for you with the equipment that you have, okay? So the idea behind the Garage Athlete program is... We're not including cables. We're not including any fancy equipment, machines. It's something that you can get out and get gritty with with just the equipment that you have ho at home in your garage um, and still see viable and definite great results as long as you have the weight to help you. Okay. Um, so look out for those things. Um, other than that, man, uh, somebody said your tattoo looks great. Hey, I appreciate that. Um, Elijah, I'm really glad that you took the time to jump on tonight. It's been a while, brother. Thank you. Leroy, have a wonderful night. You as well. Um, I'm trying to find the stream. Here we go. Don, thank you. Nolan, really? Yeah, Nolan, this may be a really great program for you. I know you've been kind of adapting and overcoming with the Meals on Wheels program. You're doing fantastic with it so far. But this is going to be a little bit more structured towards the equipment that you have at home. Okay. Uh, Neil, thank you. Pre appreciate that. Um, Anthony, um, hell yeah, prepare for the holidays and prepare for the holiday food. That's right, man. I'm excited. Thanksgiving is coming up. Yeah, it's one of my favorite holidays. Um, and then obviously Christmas. So it's going to be a big one for all of us. I'm excited. It's gonna, It's been a big year. I can't believe 2020 is already coming to a close, man. It's been challenging. Uh, we only have like maybe one or two weeks left of COVID, so that's pretty great. Remember, the election is next Tuesday. So next week, I should see you guys posting in my group on Tuesday, the day of the podcast, I voted. Every single one of you who is watching this stream tonight or sometime during the week, my expectation as the kingpin... Is that every single one of you votes? I don't care if you if you're if you're if you're hiding from Biden and you're going Trump, or if you're if you hate the orange man and you and you want to replace him with whatever option is available. I could give a fuck less. Vote, 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 vote. Okay. Very important. I'm extremely passionate about that. Okay. And it's something I really, really want you guys to be passionate about too. Because these elections and th these moments directly impact our quality of life as people. The way that we live, the progression of our country, and, and, and our values as men. Okay? And so if you're not casting your vote, then you're throwing that away. 
And who knows, you could be that needle on the haystack that completely shifts the outcome of an entire state's electoral college votes. You don't know. Okay? All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, thank you so much. I, I definitely try not to keep bring politics and all that nastiness into the community. But with that said, we're not talking politics here. We're talking about making sure that you're casting your vote. I was supposed to have the guest host tonight. I messaged him. He didn't message me back. I'll follow up with him tomorrow and find out what the story is. He probably had some other stuff going on. So it's no big deal. Um, already voted. Saying I voted. Good. Dave voted. Great. Great. Awesome, guys. I love, love to hear it. All right. With that said, guys, thank you. Thank you so much for spending the last hour or so with me. And uh, hopefully you got the motivation and drive that you need with my little, uh, with, uh, with, my, uh, with my content this week. Remember, you're not fucking special. And I will see you guys next Tuesday. Stay vigilant and stay swole. Have a good night.